it is your buddy peace and harmony with you here today much love going out to all the beautiful empowered harmonizers and we're zooming in and uh focusing in a little bit more in depth on a great viewer question and that is how to become more aware how to prevent yourself getting entangled in a relationship with a malignant narcissist or a psychopath. After you've been run through the mill, perhaps this uh, you've had a previous encounter with a relationship with someone who is you know, severely malignant, narcissistic, or psychopathic. Someone who has claimed to have a moral superiority, a spiritual superiority, um, an intellectual superiority, and they tend to taunt this, flaunt this, and you had perhaps become interested or swept up in a charisma of this individual and you've learned uh, some exposure uh, through your relationship. You've learned that they um, lie um, incessantly or they cheat behind your back, that they have no values, they have no character, they have just really an ego that needs to draw in from outside of itself in order to survive and you've gotten copped caught up or swept up in that in that web and so what are some sort of telltale things or uh, red flags as people say or things you can really be kind of become aware of so that you don't encounter this again so you become learned so you become self-protected so you become self-aware and don't relate to and identify and learn to say no and adios and have an exit strategy from these types of relationships and furthermore, to not feel bad. So really when you look at really kind of the core of a malignant narcissist as well as a psychopath, and if the psychopath of course is gonna be the more severe, profound, harmful of these personality uh, types, is to understand that there's usually gonna be a generally a pervasive feeling of they're going to have a moral superiority or a religious superiority. They're going to have a spiritual superiority. There's, there's going to be something that they feel that makes them better than everybody else. And they wear this on their cuff. Um, not just, you know, you can have people who are highly intelligent, highly spiritual, highly professional, but they don't always claim to be superior than. They don't have this sort of superiority about them. Um, they know how to communicate with others. Even if they have more experience, um, more pedigree, um, you know, they, they will use this and they'll be able to communicate with others in a humane manner. In other words, they'll give messages that are well delivered, well received. They'll keep people in their place and do this out of respect. So, um, you know, when someone is touting to have a superiority, you can just kind of see it in the air with which they walk. And yet when you look at their title and when you look at their deeds, oftentimes there is a discrepancy or an incongruency. In other words, it's the big hat, no cattle. Um, they're going to make these, uh, you know, claims that they are a rock star or, you know, a, a business, uh, you know, a God, guru, religious guru. Um, they're going to act like they know you know, uh, what's the best way uh, for you, you know, to uh, spend their hobbies. You know, they might have this sort of, it can be like even like a bad boy is the superior or the bad girl is the superior way to live. So it can be like a lifestyle superiority. And generally, they tend to sort of push this on others. Um, in other words, as they project out their superiority, they kind of wipe out your your ability to relate and connect with them. So not everybody is narcissistic, not everybody is psychopathic, but yet there tends to be this sort of superiority and they tend to push it on others. And, you know, during the love bombing phase, this might be a relationship maker where you become attracted to this person because of the track that they're on. You you respect this, you look up to it, you find them entertaining or you find them amusing or they have something that you need. Um, you need a relationship and they tend to be there for you. Um, you tend to have or you have a need to give and so you find someone you can give to. Um, this, you know, but this superior, superiority though, it tends to be like me, not you. So they can really basically extinguish others 
uh, presence when they force the superiority on others or they have this moral air of superiority. And, um, you know, generally this can lead to a highly aggressive sort of uh, rage within this type of individual if you don't satisfy this or you don't give in to it or you don't concede with it. So if you have discussion or if you have, uh, you know, you want to have a discussion or communication or just a conversation, you'll find that it oftentimes doesn't go anywhere. You can't really have relation, you know, discussions with these people too in depth because it's going to blow into an argument qu quickly. Um, it's their way or the highway. They have an incessant need to be right, uh, to be the one who knows best. Um, this is what it is. You are wrong. Um, and, and once again, you can have people who have all sorts of other walks of life who might have something similar, but really when they try to shut down others and so others don't even have a chance to communicate, you know, you're dealing with someone, let's just say they have a, a really large degree of self-importance. And, you know, it's very difficult because people who are empathetic, people who want to be able to relate to others, people who want to be able to, you know, uh, massage the feelings of others, you know, tr tend to want to belay the rough edges and try to round them out. And when these people are very sort of uh, rough exterior, <laughs> You know, they've got kind of a rough side, um, sharp edges, sort of edgy or very, what I would say, very pointed in their speech or their harmor. They're, they're very quick to point out others. Um, you know, it's the old, like, like, look over there, yet you can't look at them. In other words, it's all about they're highly opinionated and they're just going to kind of throw it out there with oftentimes a tinge of hostility or aggressiveness. And so... You know, um, these people who are highly self-important, you know, you just let them blow off their steam. Um, it's very sad because usually they hurt others in their communication, but what you're feeling is their hurt inside. You're, you're feeling their insecurity. They're, you're feeling their sense of inferiority. Um, and it can become very unpleasant to then, you know, be in a relationship. If you're into the type of person who you're you're thinking you're going to get involved with a fixer-upper, um, you know, uh, someone who needs a lot of rehab, and you're going to hear out their sob stories, and you're going to be the shoulder for them to cry on, and, you know, I'm big enough to take care of you, and you're trying to enter into the relationship with that because you find something attractive about them, you know, you're in for uh, a, a rough road. Um, these people can oftentimes be very rough communicators, uh, very harsh, and, you know, and really sort of cut others out, cut others off, and they're not really good communicators, and you're feeling like you're always left with the short end of the stick. So um, it is it is kind of sad. It is very hurtful, and people usually want to try to fix their hurt feelings with this person. Um, and so either they end up being quiet or trying to, you know, have discussion, which then quickly leads into a tit for tat or, you know, you're entering the boxing ring. So when you're dealing with this sort of more superiority, you know, it's just best not to encounter it and just say, you know, no, thank you. Um, just don't enter into the conversation. It, even though it seems odd, even though you feel like you're not being a good person by perhaps not communicating with them, um, you're not going to get anywhere. You know, you can just, you, know, you don't want to always feed their ego. They're basically just on an internal loop. And some people like to be around these people who are highly opinionated, brash. Um, maybe they find them amusing. Maybe, if, you know, if you don't have any opinion or, you know, you can then be filled up by this person um, if, you don't, um, if you don't have these strengths. Excuse me. Um, bless me. Um, bless you, child. So, you know, if you um, perhaps, you know, people who get caught up with these types of people are oftentimes, you know, people who want to connect with a stronger person because they might have a very um, sort of introverted or very sort of soft side. So it tends to be like an opposite to track situation. So, you know, when you when you see this sort of moral superiority, though, be very careful, you know, don't feel like you have to always hear them out. Um, don't feel like you always have to give them the floor, give them the spotlight. Um, you know, 
being, you know, being able to, you know, bring up something else and, I don't, you know, sometimes you just have to face your fears and you can feel this tension. If you kind of move into the tension a little bit and make sure you, you declare your ground, you know, just make sure, you know, not that you have to leave the situation because I know we have a lot of viewers who, when this happens, you know, they feel like they just want to leave. Um, it's so uncomfortable. They're, they're so angered. They feel so violated. Um, and yet you, they want to know, you know, sometimes it's just what this person is. And then, you know, you just, you know, you want to care, you want to extend your heart out to them, but these individuals, if, if they're not lacking in empathy, they're just going to do things that are, that are going to you know, continue to try to trigger you or provoke you. So just tell yourself, you know, now in the privacy of this video, I'm unprovocable. Um, I am not triggered by this. It's, it's not fair to me to be triggered by the situation because when you allow yourself to be triggered, you're allowing yourself to be disempowered. You're allowing yourself to be robbed of the opportunity to be happy. So it's like claiming back your moments um, of, of your life. I mean, this is your time. Your time is precious. So don't be trying to put up with all this for the, you know, little moment of approval glimmer of approval that you're hoping to get from them because this person could be in your family or your workplace or, you know, you're married and you're still trying to like smooth things over, you know, um, don't feel like you're, you're trying to vie for that one little moment of happiness, um, that I love you, um, that, you know, you're right. I get where you're coming from. They're not going to want to see, you know, um, the other side of the coin. It's going to, they're going to have one side of their coin you know, don't try to fix it. Don't try to fix them. Don't try to fix the communication. Um, just begin to tell yourself, it's not fair to me to be triggered by the situation. It's not right for me to be triggered by the situation. It is my inalienable human right to be happy. And I'm going to be happy despite this. And, um, and, and so just being in that and knowing that, and no matter what they think that they're, um, you know, going to lash out or insult you or the repercussions, you know, um, don't try to, uh, prevent what they're going to do because you'll waste your time. You'll waste your energy. You're always living on the defensive at the, at that point. So just know who they are and, and know that within the heart of yourself and don't, you know, don't try to control for the smear campaign or if you feel like they're going to try to shut you down. Um, when they have this moral superiority, spiritual superiority, financial superiority, whatever it is that they're, you know, these people are, it's just not pleasant. And so you can just um, have, develop this inner dialogue is really the key of how you understand and cope with these people and understand kind of where you're, where you're reclaiming your own boundary and standard in that saying, you know, this is the positive zone and I'm not going to sacrifice that to this person. I don't want to be a sacrifice to this person. You know, I make enough sacrifices in my life just to, to help others. I don't need, you know, to take it down a level here. So, um, be very aware of this and really kind of claim your rights back, especially when you have holidays or things of this nature and you're encountering these people. Um, you know, perhaps you just need to honor your personal growth, um, and your happiness and get into that higher level of consciousness where you become more etheric energy more than mass and just allow yourself to be expansive and radiate the positive don't stop being happy just because this person is either in your life or was in your life it's time to pick up the pace even harder when this happens and begin to surround yourself and resensitize yourself with that which does make you happy so that you don't miss a beat so that you're not missing out so that you're in your intuition you're in your higher consciousness even if you're just learning about this person from what the things that they do and they say at least if you're not triggered not i'm saying numbed out but don't not to be triggered or set off just observe and like let it pass by observe and let it pass by don't um assign either super you know super excited or super negative just begin to be calm around it and let their reactions just sort of float by you as some people say you know the the leaves on a stream just let it flow by you like clear water so you're not depriving yourself of your clear consciousness begin in the, those moments to develop your inner dialogue about what that is and 
really have that strong and saying, I am not triggered by that. It's not fair to me to be triggered by that. And so develop your composure, develop your posture, develop your positioning, and don't sink down into a feeling of being less than. Really prop yourself up and rise through your internal dialogue and remain, you know, your dignity and poise. I have dignity and poise in the divine. I have dignity and poise in the divine. And that is knocked out, not knocked down by someone who is claiming superiority or spiritual superiority or whatever it is that they're trying to come at me with. Um, and so, and always then, of course, like we discussed, it's how important it is to deflect. It's so important to deflect that off. Um, meaning, um, you know, just if you, you know, if you feel that you don't need to engage in the conversation, then don't engage in it. Don't feel that, you know, if you're missing out on conversation, then find someone to communicate with in the moment or, you know, have that communication within, look within for what you're seeking. Um, and so don't deprive yourself because of this person. That's very important that you don't get into a path of self-neglect, self-deprivation, self-minimization, feeling less than, you know, you feel like you're backsliding. Um, you know, begin to ask yourself in that moment, what is the next thing I can do to be happy and enjoy the situation? And allow your, allow your spirit to answer, allow yourself to be guided by this and allow yourself to do and fill your space with what makes you happy and what is really meaningful to you. And don't give that up to this person. Don't give in, begin to build on that. So you're not just, uh, being waffled over or having your boundaries violated, but they're enforced and you're consciously aware of it and then your standards so you could enact in that from the inside out. That's just one tool and I hope that these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.